Hi there. Got a bruised bum? Maybe you fell funny and your coccyx, your tailbone, is not happy. So we're going to have a short tongue run session just for that situation. First point we're going to use, I'm going to show you here, is on the side of the hand, small intestine 3. And this point opens the back midline, so that has a lot to do with the spine. Very strong connection with the spine. So small intestine 3. Oh, both sides, you can't see that very well. Small intestine 3. And small intestine 3 has a um, companion point, ladder 62, on the outside of the heel. Let me bring that up. Yep. Oh, let's make this a little more steady. Yeah, the outside of the heel just by the ankle bone. Yep. Splatter 62, companion point for small intestine 3. Both sides. And bladder 62 has a lot to do with uh, the back of the body and the musculature there. So as you may know all too well, you fall down and you fall wrong on your butt, your back is not good. Okay, so we just opened all that just to set the scene for how we're going to focus. And let's go to the head office. Let's call in at the head office and we're going to do governing vessel 19 and governing vessel 21. These points are right over the sensory and the motor neural cortexes. So this is the area in the brain that has a lot to do with how we feel what we feel and how we move when we do move. So we're going to um, wake up the neurological system and get that running to help our cause. So, yeah, and because it's all about flow, governing vessel 17 on the back of the head. So this is right over the deep brain, the primal brain. And we want this area, this area has a lot to do with automatic circulation, so heartbeat, um, heart uh, beat regulation, neurological circulation. This all these very, very fundamental basic processes of living uh, are, are run from this office. Okay, so let's go to C1, cervical one right where the head and the neck come together. So it's these transition points that are often get easily bound up. And I know this is a long way from the coccyx, but you've heard it said, as above, so below. That's true in the body, especially along the spine. So C1, we're opening up any restriction that may have happened there. And sometimes when you fall, you can tense up in other places, no matter where you hit. Uh, it's a natural response. You want to protect your head. It's kind of important. You use it from time to time. And let's open on the other end of the neck, Tian Dong. So we're kind of bookending the neck. I want to open the neck to release any tension holding here, which might encourage should encourage and will encourage uh, tension and holding on the other end of the spinal column. So Tian Dong and we'll do a triple warmer 16 on the side of the neck and small intestine 16 on the side of the neck. Two of these to open up these side neck muscles. So we've pretty well bracketed the neck Let's move on. We'll go to T1, 2, 3, thoracic 1, 2, 3. And if you know Tong Ran, you know we use these points for anti-inflammatory, among other things. 
and uh, inflammation is actually part of the healing process. It does serve a purpose uh, in acute injury. Uh, inflammation has got a bad name because people understand that when there is chronic inflammation, it's not good. It um, overloads the system, shall we say. So, um, in the healing process, we want to have inflammation right away, but as you start to heal, let's tone that down a little bit. So, T123. And we're going to move on to T7 on the right, specifically on the right, um, helps with circulation of abdominal blood. So, you know, the abdomen is the front side of the pelvis, and we want circulation to be good here. We want a good blood supply for uh, bringing in the reserves and taking out the trash. That's one thing that the blood does and T8 on the right. Systematic enzymes. So let's support all the metabolic processes of healing. So T7 and 8 on the right. And let's move on down to uh, the local area, the ouch area. And we want L4 and 5, lumbar 4 and 5. So these are the last two vertebrae. And L5 is where the sacrum and the vertebrae come together. So it's another transition point. Very important. And the nerves from this area enervate the whole lower body. So we want to uh, open the gates here. So we opened up the head office. We want to open up the local gates here. And sacrum S4 and 5. So again, really getting down to the real serious ouch area and opening up the neurological flow. And GV2, governing vessel 2, right where the sacrum and the coccyx meet. Let's open that transition point as well. Free it up. And let's go for some local musculature that might have gotten tight. Uh, from falling and trying to keep oneself safe. Again, I say it's a very automatic process. Both sides. Gallbladder 30. Right over these big muscles, the glute complexes and the uh, piriformis and the associated piriformis muscles all in that area. This area that has suffered insult. Let's see if we can give it a little energy and let it go back to where it was, if not improved. New and improved. And bladder 40 behind the knees. This is a really good point for opening up drain, uh, draining any held tension, any stuck chi in the back. So bladder 40, we're going to, we released everything above, we're going to let it just run down the chute and run out. And speaking of running, we're going to do liver 3. We always do liver 3. Liver 3 is a wonderful point. Really good chi circulation in the body as a whole. So we're making sure that things are flowing. And then finally, kidney one on the bottom of the feet. So we help to draw down through that bladder 40 uh, and discharge out uh, any chi stagnation, uh, anything that's being held, any t muscular tensions, any blockages, but also by opening this area, bubbling spring, kidney one, uh, we have uh, connection with our parent earth. We have a good stance on the ground. We get nourished by our parent earth. So, all these areas, upper, middle, lower, tying together in one big brocade, working as a whole. 
upper, middle, lower, integrated as above, so below. Thanks for watching.